Welcome to episode 21 of the Tax Smart Daily, a daily video series for real estate investors to learn about saving money on taxes and staying out of trouble. I'm Brandon Hall. And before we get started, I invite you to join our Tax Smart Facebook group and our Tax Smart newsletter. Links to both of those are in the description of this video. Additionally, if you have any questions or if anything that I say resonates with you, please leave a comment on this video. I will definitely jump in there and, and engage with, with the community. I really love doing that. Lastly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I don't want you to miss any new videos that we drop. Uh, we, we do daily videos, we do podcasts, we do live Q&As. So if you subscribe, you won't miss anything. Now, today's topic is coming off the heels of a newsletter that I sent out, the, the Tax Smart newsletter to our 15 or so thousand subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed to it, like I said, go subscribe to it so you don't miss this stuff in the future. But part of the newsletter, I asked the question, uh, well, the, the question that we were, we were discussing was, should I sell my rental property now or should I just hold forever? And I applied a real life example. And so we're going to go through that real life example today. I also solicited uh, responses. So I said, hey, if you have an idea of how I can approach this, send me an email back. Now, the main response that I received back, I received probably 20 responses. So it was awesome. Thank you so much for replying was that I should refinance the rental property rather than sell it or try to do something like that. So to start the, the big question was, should I sell my rental today? And this was, this was coming out of a, a different forum that we're a part of, but then I applied my own, my own rental property as an example. So should I sell my rental today? And if I sell my rental, I get cash now. Uh, and then I have to calculate the taxable gain, right? But if I take that cash, I can't go, I can't really 1031 the rental because if I sell it to avoid that, if I 1031 to avoid the tax hit during this sale, then I've got to buy another rental and I'm going to buy it top of market, right? So I sell it top of market, which is great. But then I also am forced to buy it top of market, which is not so great. So the question is, do I just sell it, take the tax hit? Or do I just hold it and keep cash flowing? Now, my rental, we're going to do this together and I'm going to share my screen here. Um, so I applied, applied the real life example of my rental. So I bought this rental back in 2015 and I paid $91,000 for it. Uh, I put about $27,000 into it, or, or sorry, $27,000 down. And then I put another 15 or so thousand dollars into it uh, over the course of five years. And that was the roof, that was the HVAC units, some different repairs and maintenance and things like that. Now it cash flows, so so it's rented for sixteen fifty per month, and it cash flows about nine fifty when you don't factor in like the repairs and maintenance and stuff like that. So the fifteen thousand dollars repairs and maintenance completely separate, at least when I'm like trying to calculate this. So ca cash flow is about nine fifty a month, and you know nine fifty a month, nine fifty times twelve divided by uh, 27 plus 15, uh, 42, uh, you know, not that bad, <laughs> pretty darn good, right? It's a pretty good, pretty good cash on cash return. Um, so I called my real estate agent up because I was like, what, where, where are we at market wise? Like where are we at value wise? Uh, and my real estate agent said, you could sell this right now for $260,000 which just blew my mind. I'm like literally jaw, jaw hit the floor. Uh, so 260K. So my, my current note on it's about 61. <clears throat> and that means that I've got about $199,000 of equity in the property. So the question is, do I sell the property now, take a tax hit, or do I do I keep the property and just keep cash flowing? Now, I, when I solicited responses to the, on the TaxSmart newsletter, Everybody came back and said you should just refinance instead, and uh, and that was a great option and and one that I had discussed and thought about previously, but for whatever reason didn't actually throw it into the newsletter. So so if I sell right now, I've got a two hundred sixty thousand dollar sales price. Uh, I've got my ninety one thousand dollar purchase price. I've also got about eighteen thousand dollars of depreciation. So I'd really be looking at like two sixty uh, minus. Uh, if we do 91 minus 18 minus 73, so minus 73, uh, my gain on this is going to be 187, 187, and then I'll pay taxes on that, right? So I'll pay probably I don't know, $40,000 or so in taxes, or I could just refinance 
260K at a, let's just call it 70% loan to value. Uh, the loan that I would receive is, this has a tax purpose, I promise. We'll get to that in a second. 182. And then I would go and pay off. Uh, so I would receive 182K in cash. I'd pay off that $61,000 loan minus 61. Uh, and I would be left with a $120,000 cash out. Uh, that's 121K. So $121,000 cash out. Now, the important thing to understand about rental real estate is, and, and we talked about this a little bit in that ProPublica daily video that I did a few days ago. When I do a cash out refinance, that $121,000 cash out, that's tax free. I don't pay taxes on that because loan proceeds are not taxable. There's no tax event. I still own the asset. I haven't sold the asset. And that's exactly what the billionaires are doing in that ProPublica article. Their wealth is expanding with the businesses that they own, the, the, their, their ownership uh, or their, their total value of their stock in their company has grown and they're able to basically just refinance on that to fund their lifestyle without ever actually selling the stock. And what that allows them to do is it avoids any sort of income tax transaction. So they don't have to pay income taxes and they just get these massive loan proceeds to go buy the $200 million yacht. Uh, now I'm not going to buy a $200 million yacht, but it's cool to kind of apply this sort of this same sort of logic to a rental property. So I can receive this $121,000 net cash because I'm going to refinance at 70%. So the loan, the, the bank's going to give me 182K. I got to go pay off the old loan of 61, leaves me with 121 and that's tax-free. And now I can park it anywhere, right? So I can park it I can park it in my bank account. I can park it in a money market fund. I can park it in GameStop stock. I wouldn't actually do that, but, <laughs> but I, can, I can put this thing anywhere and I don't have to worry about the tax consequences on the $121,000. Now, there's some risk with this, right? Let's say that the market goes down. So let's say that I've refinanced. Now I, uh, I've got $182,000 loan and now the property value goes down to, you know, Maybe it's 150K now. Well, now I'm underwater 30,000 bucks. Whereas I wouldn't have been underwater if I kept the old loan and didn't refinance at all and just held the property and kept it, kept it cash flowing. Additionally, when I refinance, uh, my, my payment, my payment on, on this loan, on the $61,000 loan is about 550 a month. So when I refinance, that's going to go up probably about, uh, I think I did this math, it's about $500 a month or so. So it's going to go up 500. So my, my cash flow right here, is actually going to go down to 450 a month. Now, I'm lucky because I bought this property at a really good time. It's got a really strong rental history, very few vacancies. Uh, so that 450 a month, I can pretty much count on um, in for the most part. And that 450 a month on whatever this net equity is, uh, I think that the 950 on the, the 950 a month on the increased equity, the 199K is only like 6%. But when I bump this up, the 450 on this equity is like like six and a half or 7%. It goes up a little bit. So it, so it even like increases my return on equity. And I like to look at return on equity versus just cash on cash return. Because right now, this cash on cash return is amazing, right? Oh, 950 a month on $27,000 plus 15K. That's amazing cash on cash return. I showed you what that was, about 18%. Great. But that's not what's really going on because I've got all this equity in the property. So now all of a sudden this 950 a month compared to my total equity is not very good. So that's what's leading me to kind of go, wait a second, should I do something with this property? And the reason that I'm, I'm using this as an example is because this is a real life example, but also because a lot of our clients right now are asking the same thing. Uh, the, the market's running up. What should I do with my rental real estate? Should I, should I sell it? Should I refinance it? Uh, and we are typically helping people understand how the refinance process can work. So in this example, I can't cash out all my equity, but I can cash out a good chunk of it tax-free to me. Uh, and I'm still cash flowing 450 a month, which is great. Uh, and I can hold this asset at 450 a month for a really long time. And I can reapply that 121K into new assets. Perhaps I can get it into something that's going to give me a return on equity, a return on this 121K of 10, 12%, rather than what I'm getting right now of about 6%. So that's kind of the, kind of the idea here. Now, uh, I also said in the newsletter that 
if I ever become like some real estate guru or social media influencer, uh, I'm only ever going to talk about this property because, <laughs> because it's clearly a successful property. But believe me, I have had plenty of losses and plenty of plenty of failures as well. I had a three unit up in Baltimore that was just a, a just not a fun experience. Uh, the tenants always paid late, and I was just never I was never. Um, was a, uh, I never had, uh, I, I was never, I never had thick enough skin to really put my foot down and say, no, you have to pay me on time. So trust me, this is like, this is luck. This is just being in the right place at the right time. Uh, this is definitely not like some super skill that I have, uh, but it is a real example. And I just kind of wanted to show you what the numbers look like. So I hope that, that makes sense. The point here, the lesson is that if you sell the rental real estate, you've got to look at the total gain. The total gain is going to be my 260 minus my cost, um, and then also minus whatever depreciation that I've claimed. I'm going to have to pay tax on the depreciation recapture and on the capital gain. We just talked about that last daily episode. Or I could refinance, hold the cash flowing asset. It is cash flowing even after refinance, so that'll be great. And I get this cash out that's tax free to me. Uh, and I can reapply that at higher return on equity rates. So hope you enjoyed today's TaxSmart video. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Love to engage with you. And I really appreciate the people that take 10 to 10 to 30 seconds, we'll call it 30 seconds uh, out of your day to, to ask me questions and to engage with me. So thank you so much for doing that. And follow us online. We've got a whole bunch of links in the description of this video. You can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on, um, on LinkedIn, and, and join our various communities. We'd really love to have you uh, be a part of it. Thanks so much.